Hello, I'm Jason McDaniel with Olympus Controls. As you may be aware, your Osset tray wrapper machines used an old Panasonic servo for the five various axes on your machine. We have engineered a solution to replace those obsolete axes with new equipment and have made a very seamless and simple integration to save you money and get you up and running quickly. I will now proceed to show you what our kit consists of and how you establish installing it in your machine. Our kit consists of four items. You have your motor power cable, your motor feedback cable, your motor, and your servo amplifier. Each servo amplifier will come with documentation to show exactly how to configure your amplifier and wire it into your machine. We will cover that next. Okay, the first step is to wire your motor into the drive. A small tool is provided on the connector. You simply push it and plug the wire in. Move to the next terminal. The phasing is red, white, and black from top to bottom. And then you would take the ground terminal and screw it into the screw terminal. Next, you would take your encoder cable, and this cable is simply going to plug straight in. And you make the connection to the encoder. Now on the other end of the cable, you're simply going to plug your motor in. We have two options. The connection shown here is an upgraded version with a a sealed type connector which will help your motor from wash down environments and getting damaged. We also offer it with the standard Panasonic connectors uh, which you have to take more care with. But in this case we're going to simply find where the notches align and then screw it together. One thing to note about the motor is that this motor will mount exactly in the same location as the current motor. It has the exact same pilot diameter, bolt circle diameter, bolt size on the hole, and the shaft. So this motor will drop right in to all of the axes, same motor for all axes, and work seamlessly. No mechanical changes are required on your machine whatsoever. The next step is to plug in your AC power and your I.O. connection to the machine controller. Power just like the motor connection is on a removable connector. So that's a nice advantage of the new drive. Here I've already pre-wired our power connector for 120 volt AC power. For your machine with the 230 volt you'd simply go 1, 2, and 3 from the top and you would have no jumper wires in 4 and 5. These are simply there to run on single phase power. The next thing is to plug in our machine controller cable. This is going to be the exact same cable that is currently used in the machine. So you're simply going to plug it in. There's no rewiring required to your machine controller. And now you've wired your system completely. Now we're ready to power it up. Upon initialization, you'll see that it flashes on the screen and it comes up reading a parameter zero. We're reading the display of the motor. If I turn the shaft, you'll see that the number changes. So I did not receive any errors, which means the axis is ready to run. The unit comes pre-configured as a side belt axis for the Osset tray wrapper. So if this was a side belt axis, it would simply be running and you would require no further action. If it was one of the other axes, a cutter, an ND, a film, or an infeed, you'd refer to the documentation and then change the parameter that is anything other than an X. As you can see in our list, most of the axes require very little changes from the original side belt that's pre-configured. If now we want to change to a cutter axis, we'll see here on page 2 that parameter 44 and parameter 4B require changes to 10,000 and 1,000. Other than that, there are no changes required in this drive to be configured as a cutter. So I'll now show you how to do that. Okay, if you're familiar with the current offset axes, then you'll be very familiar with this one. It programs the exact same manner. The form factor of the display is very similar. 
the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit set and mode. It will now pull up and say enter parameter. Now we got to scroll to the parameter we want to change. Again, here we're going to change this side belt configured unit to a cutter. So we need to go to parameter 44. As you hold down the keypad on the up arrow, it'll start taking off very rapidly up to the parameter you want. I've come to 44. I'm going to hit the set button. It's currently configured as a 58, as you will see here for parameter 44 for the side belt. Now we need to change it to 10,000. So we're simply going to decrease to in increment to a zero on that, use the function over, increment to a zero, increment over one more, enter a zero. And now one more time. And now we have 10,000. So we're gonna hit the button set. And now we need to find parameter 4B and set 4B to 1000. So we'll go up in our parameter set. Now we're at 4B, we hit set. It is currently set to 5000 for the side belt axis and we need to set it to 1000. So we're gonna scroll our arrow for a decimal point over three times, hit the down arrow until we come to 1000. Now we're going to hit the set button. Your axis is now configured for a cutter. That's all that's required. The very last step before we power cycle the unit is we need to flash that into memory so that upon a power cycle it doesn't revert to a side belt axis. Okay, now that we've entered our parameters, we're now going to save it to flash memory. We're going to hit the mode button one time, and now we're going to see it says EE set we're going to hit the set button. Now you're going to hold down the arrow key until it scrolls over and you have six arrows and now it says reset. Now all we have to do is reset our axis and now it's powering up and now it is configured for a cutter axis. That's all that's required. And again the same process holds true for the ND film and in-feed axes each of which only has two to four parameters to change and then it's completely configured. Hopefully you see how easy our system is to configure and use and retrofit in the machine and we hope to work with you in the future.